Okay, I wanted to run a malolactic paper chromatography test. Uh, this is where we test to see if malolactic fermentation is complete. And uh, I bought this uh, uh, set from Presky Isle, a place that I really like doing business with. And I went ahead and took a piece of paper out and I drew a line with a pencil one inch from the bottom and I put X's where I'm going to put each sample. Okay, and the standards that come with this test are tartaric acid, lactic acid, and malic acid. And each of those standards are going to get a little dot on this paper. Notice I marked it at the top. And down below I'm going to put them dots right on the X's. And then I have four vessels of wine that I'm going to sample. And I mark those at the top along with their accompanying X's at the bottom. So in all I'm going to have a sample going across uh, including the three uh, acid standards. So with that I'm going to set this thing down and I'm going to get the uh, capillaries out to put the samples on the paper. Okay, the first one I'm going to do is the malic acid standard. I'll take the capillary that they give me and I'll fill it up just to the line that's marked, but otherwise You can use a paper towel to kind of dab it out to get it a little less. You know, get it right where it wants so that when you touch it to the paper, you want that standard to soak into the paper and have approximately a quarter inch in diameter sample. Use a different capillary for the next acid. So we're going to do lactic acid. And I'll grab a new tube. Dab out the additional. Give it a little bounce for stubborn And then we're going to do the tartaric acid standard using a new Okay, then I'm going to get some samples of wine. Okay, we're going to do wine sample number one. Wine sample number two. And each of these samples are, are about an inch apart. We're going to do wine sample number three. Significant to note that I'm using a different capillary tube for each one to con prevent contamination of one to the other. And wine sample number four. Now I'm going to let this all of the samples dry for about a half an hour. Okay, now with our paper dry, we're going to fold it into a cylinder, making sure not to overlap the edges of the paper. And we're going to staple it on the top and the bottom. into a cylinder like this. Okay, then we're going to take the developer and we're going to fill it up into just a half inch on the bottom. When we set the cylinder down into the jar here, we only want the developer to come up only halfway. We don't want it to touch the spots of wine above it. So, with that, And you can reuse this developer, so whatever you know when we're done with the test, we'll actually dump the developer back in the 
thing. Okay, and then we just raise this up a little bit. What we're going to do is lower this down into the developer and just set it on the bottom. And I believe within six to eight hours, I heard you could do it overnight. That's going to raise up through there and then the next, and we're going to put the half cap on tight. And we don't want to disturb it. And we'll come back and we'll look at the chromatogram after it dries. Okay, after six to eight hours, we will take the paper out of the developer. And we need to hang it to dry. And you'll see that it's already started kind of raising up the uh, wine sample capillary action. And apparently when this dries, we will get a visible trace of the various acids in the paper. So we'll hang this up and then we'll visit it again soon. Okay, so here's the developed chromatogram. Here's my malic acid standard. Here's my lactic acid standard and here's my tartaric acid standard. These are my four wine samples. And as you can see, this is the tartaric acid because they're all lining up. This right here is where the malic acid is. And here's the lactic acid up at the top. Our goal is to convert the malic acid to lactic acid. So right now these spots on my chromatogram are very similar. Um, it's telling me, I guess, that malolactic fermentation is still happening and perhaps it's halfway through. And based on how long it's been going, I would have to say that mine's happening rather fast. So I'm going to follow up in about two or three weeks with another one. Um, and the idea is there will be, the dots will be either not here or very small for the um, malic acid. And the dots up at the top will be larger, meaning lactic acid. So basically in the MLF, the ML fermentation, the malic acid has been converted to the lactic acid. So we're waiting to basically see this area, area of color disappear in our next test. And that's it.